Hello, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a recap episode for the Spectrum Diagnostic video. I wanted to do a part two, but I don't really have enough to do a big episode. So I thought we could quickly look at some of the work that I've been doing. First of all, we can see one of the boards and I had hoped to turn it into a ZIF baseboard. I did try, as you can see here, but it failed miserably. Nothing worked. And it was all down to how I'd extended the ZIF sockets on the board. This picture, you can see that I had to rise it up above some of the surrounding components. It was very tight space with the sockets that I've got. I tried it, nothing worked, so I took it all out and now we're back to normal sockets. I did a small selection of the RAM multiplexers for the upper and the lower RAM. The lower RAM already had one and I did an upper RAM. So we can test most of the components. Like before, I'm not going to test lower RAM because it has potential to damage other parts of the board. I have been talking to the guy that developed the diagnostic card. He liked the video and he has taken on board adding a second diagnostic so that we can switch between two different ones with a jumper. We now have a speaker which is working. We have a custom ROM. I did buy one that I can easily program and I've put heat sinks on the Z80 and on the ULA. I also installed cap kit which I sourced from RS. They were nice Visay caps. Now we're going to move on to testing some more chips. My friend sent me another CPU, ULA and a ROM for me to check. First, let's just do a quick test and you'll hear that the speaker is now working. This test is using the new ROM that I've got and as we will see, it actually fails because the checksum doesn't match what it's looking for. But we know that it's a good ROM. So even though it says it's unknown or corrupt, I know that it's okay, so I did let it carry on with the tests. But for the rest of them, I'm going to put the original system ROM back in so that we don't get that error. But before we do that, I'm going to test the faulty ROM that my friend sent me. So let's quickly pop that in. And we will instantly see that when we power it on, the diagnostic just says, nope, not a chance. Right, let's put a good known system ROM back in and quickly run through the test just to make sure that everything is still working and it's good so let's move on the next chip that i'm going to test is the z80 that i originally had from the first batch of faulty chips so we'll just quickly take the old one out put the new one in run the test and we get pretty much the same result as the bad rom the diagnostic card just says nope this is not working the next test is another z80 so we'll quickly get that swapped over, we'll run the tests, and surprise, surprise, this one is actually passing the diagnostic tests. So this could be a good one, and we'll test it later on with playing some games and lots more testing. The last chip to test today is a ULA that's marked with two crosses. I have a feeling this one is going to be bad. So we'll quickly get it swapped over, we'll power up, and as we see, we get nothing, no display on the screen, no beeps from the test card, absolutely nothing at all. It is dead. It's not pining, it's dead. So not a bad result. We have managed to find a working Z80 out of the recent batch of faulty chips. That's pretty good. We are going to be looking at another Spectrum project. And as you can see, this board is in a 3D printed enclosure. And you can see here a quick glimpse. So keep a lookout for the mechanical Spectrum case. So thank you for watching this quick recap. I'm going to be doing these more often just to fill in the gaps of the longer projects that I tend to do. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all soon.